So I'm going to talk about authorization. And essentially, this is um, allowing an authenticated user into specific parts of the system. So it is different than authentication. So in this, we're assuming you're already authenticated. And you just need to authorize different users to do different things on different parts of your site. So I have set up a uh, routes file, which has a bunch of different routes. Uh, so login, for example, probably should have tested that this was actually running. It is cool. So my login route just shows all of my users. Uh, is font size on this all right for you guys, or does it need to be bigger? Yeah, it looks good to me. Cool. And then if you give an ID, it will actually log that user in because we're going to be switching users a bunch here. So the first thing I want to go over is gates. So there are kind of two, two parts here. There are gates and there are policies. <clears throat> and you'll find that policies are just gates that are in a class, essentially. So in your auth service provider, so app providers, auth service provider, you can define gates for yourself. And so I have one here called net email and it accepts, all of them accept a user as the first parameter. And you'll see later, you can have a second, like optional parameters after that, but all of them accept a user. And then you can just return true or false, whether or not this, this gate is allowed based on whatever you want. So here I'm just checking uh, for net email, does the string end with .net. So does the user's email end with .net. So when I go to net emails only, I'm going to log in with the first user here. So Alex Mayer uh, or amayer at example.com. So I do not. And then I'm going to go to net emails only. And you can see Alex Mayer does not end with .net. So here I have their email. I check if the, if the gate denies them access and our return email does not end with, but if we switch to user two, who I believe does end with .NET, and we go to the same exact endpoint, it is authorized. So they would be able to see whatever is behind this route. And so we use the denies here, but you can also use the allows. So gate allows, uh, and then an email domain. And you'll notice that here in our gate, we're passing a second option, so us.gov. So in our auth service provider for email domain, we are accepting a domain here. And instead of doing just ends with .NET, it just ends with that domain. So you can make very, you can make dynamic gates. They don't have to be like very specific, like lockdown. You can do kind of whatever you want. You can accept multiple options. I just chose to accept one here, but you can accept a bunch. And that way you just kind of have dynamic gates. So we're gonna say if it allows it, they're gonna see top secret stuff. If it doesn't, there's nothing to see. So we've got area 51, nothing to see because my email ends in .NET. But if I go to the third user, who is amir at us.gov, I'm going to refresh this. I can see all the top secret stuff. So the next thing is, um, so that's kind of that's kind of nice. Like you can do like yes, a true or a false. Like are you authorized or not? But the next thing that we want to do is like why? Why are we authorized or not? And what if we need to display more information to the user? So you can inspect a gate. <clears throat> so I have a gate here called admin, and it just accepts a user, no no extra parameters. But we return. We check if the user is an admin and we either send an allow response or deny response. And with our deny response, we can send a message. So if they are denied, it will say, You're, you must be an administrator. And the user admin is very simple. I just check, is this email amair at example.com? And that's the only admin on the site. So if we go to slash admin here, you can see you must be an administrator. So that is this exact message that we just posted back uh, because I just use the response message. So, so I get the response from the gate and then you can get the response message. So if they, you can check if they are denied or if they are allowed and then uh, you can get the message this way if they are denied. So if I switch to the first user again, you can see admin stuff here. So I switched to alexmarinexample.com who is the only admin on the site and they can see all the admin stuff. Any questions so far? So that response message, you could also pass through um, in the allow, you could also pass through a message and then it would be in that message as well if it was allowed instead of denied? I don't believe so. I think this is only on a deny.
Oh, well, yeah, no, you're right. I did not read about that in the documentation, but apparently that uh, that works. Cool. Yeah, I I never seen the inspect before. So I never knew about the messages either. So personally, I've never used the inspect either, but I mean, I, it kind of makes sense. Like, so so I've thought about doing more things like this, like saying why they aren't. And, and for most cases, you're just checking like, are they the admin? Yes or no. So you can return a true or false there. And it's kind of like self-evident, like, are they an admin? Now, if you're doing something, like, let's say uh, when we get into like the policies a little bit later, like, are they an admin or are they a... Uh, uh, do they own this thing or do they, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you have like three different layers and you want to see why, which one of those three layers denied them. This might become a little bit um, more useful. I don't know that I have an example quite that elaborate, but we'll see. So next I have these posts. So I'm an admin. Let's go back to the non-admin user and let's go to posts. So you can see here all of our posts on our website and we can view each of the posts, although actually we can't. Uh, you do not work for the government, so you cannot see this post, even though you can see the little blurb here, but we're gonna fix that. So this is what a policy looks like. A policy is essentially just like a post policy. Um, so I usually name it like, what is the model that I'm kind of uh, making a policy for? So posts and then can the user view any? Again, these look very much like gates. Every one of these gates accepts a user. Can they view it? Can they create it? Can they update it? So these are kind of matching up one-to-one -one with the controller. So you can see where these will be useful with controllers and allowing or not. So can they view any? I have set to true. And that's why I can see this. So if I log in, let's, let's copy this link and go to an incognito browser. You can see this action is unauthorized. So I am not logged in. So the only, so I have returned true here, everybody can view it. But the difference or the, the thing about gates is they, the first thing they check is, are you authenticated? If you do not have a user, you are automatically denied before you even get to this method here. So if I change this to have an optional user, so I just added a question mark there, then as an unauthenticated user, I can still see that. So you can still use policies and have like, uh, optional uh they change the change whether or not they have to be logged in generally when you're making policies you want people to be logged in but for an index page like this on posts it might be might be worth it to to let people um see it so yeah you just have to make the the param the, the user parameter optional so i'm gonna change that back uh, i don't think it actually matters but just to keep everything the same so the way that i've linked this up to my controller is in the constr uh, construct method, I just say this authorized resource, you pass it a class and you pass it the name of the parameter on the route. So on the post route, if you look at something like the route list here, on the post route, the post is the, the name of the option. So you can do it on, let's say you wanted to name this like um, article. So you have slash posts and the name of your parameter is articles or article. You can still use the, the thing, but you just have to type article here. Now, since, since uh, Laravel is actually kind of smart and it will guess that the option is named post based on the name of the class. So you actually don't need that there. This will still work. And uh, yeah, uh, everything's still, I still don't have access to that. But yeah, so, so it still knows that the, the name is post, but you can be explicit and let it there or you can, uh, since the class name is post and the uh, parameter name is post, you don't actually actually have to have that there. But yeah, you can see if I take this off, um, then none of these routes are going to be protected. So I can just go anywhere I want all over the site. So adding just this one thing to your const uh, constructor method will uh, just enable it for that entire resource, which is I think is super awesome. Now, let's say you just wanted to, to do one or two of these. I mean, you could still use those gates and you could do down here and like the create and say like if uh, actually I'm blanking on this. I think it's this authorize. Yeah, so this authorize and then you you do update. Oh, actually it might be user. Yeah, I probably should have went to this example. Oh, uh, but you can do a gate on each of these. I, I think it's like the user user can do this thing and then you pass in the uh, the post class and then the uh, the object that they would be manipulating. 
Uh, but I usually, if I'm if I'm using policies, I usually just do this on the whole thing. And if I want somebody to be able to get through, dang it, go away. If I want somebody able to get through, I just you know add the optional parameter here. So moving on to the next thing, so we can see the index. Uh, so how does to... um how does that quickly how does that authorize yeah. resource function know to go to that post policy.php file? Uh, just by convention. So this is post policy, and this is a post. Yeah, you know, I, be I believe like... it's linked to the class that you pass it. So you pass it a post, and it'll say like, okay, I want the post policy. So you don't have to create like an array that posts get the post policy. Nope. No, I yeah, I didn't create any anything anywhere as far as linking these up. I know that in the documentation it says that you need to, but I, um, I believe after like five five, it just automatically kind of would find this file. So it has to be in the policies, and like I named it like post policy. As so long as I it's in that folder to... and named to the right thing, it'll yeah. automatically detect it. Yep, automatically detects it and links it up. So I always try to name my things the letter about way that way I don't have to do like a bunch of extra configuration. It's just kind of, I use the convention. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the, the index file here. So that's what we're looking at right now. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. So this is a typical like blade uh, template. And you can see here, you can also use these in the, uh, you can use the like can and cannot and things like that inside Blade as well. So can create, if they can create, if they have the ability to create and you can pass in the post class, then it will show this link here. So you can see that I don't have the create link, but if I switch back to being the admin or who can create, let's see, let's go to the policy and under the policy, uh, anybody, so that's view, so create. So I'm using the gates here inside of my policy. I'm, I'm using these gates. So they have to have the email domain and they have to be us.gov. So anybody from us.gov is allowed to create. So we're going to go back to user, th oh, user three here, and that's us.gov. And then when I refresh, you can see I have this new post button now. So you can even modify blade. It's not even just things on the back end. Uh, you can, on things on the front end, you can check. Can this user create? Okay, show this new post button. And you'll notice down here, I have a few more. So if they can update it, they get view, or sorry, they get, uh, they, so anybody can view, or the view button always shows, which probably might be bad because we want to maybe want to check if they can view, uh, but just for simplicity's sake, I didn't put any kind of validation on that. Uh, but there, there will also be an edit button if they are allowed to update it, and a delete button if they are allowed to delete it. So in the post policy, I've defined who can update it, uh, if the user that created it, if you are the user that created the post, you can update it, and nobody can delete it. Uh, so by default, if these methods either don't exist or don't return anything, they return false. They so they it, it kind of defaults towards being more secure. So like for instance, right now uh, I can view this, but if I comment out this view any, I can't view it. Nobody can view this. So it, it'd be the same as returning false if this method just does not exist. So so like let's say we don't have delete functionality on our site, we can delete this out of this file just to keep this clean, and Laravel will just handle like nobody can delete. So uh, it looks like Nate, Nathan Gov is the one that uh, posted these. So I'll go to, I'm oh, sorry, user number four. So Nathan Gov, and if I refresh, now we have the edit button, but he can't delete them. So obviously there's a different rule for who can delete. Uh, and, and as we saw before, there is nobody can delete. So that's kind of where things like this come in. So you can have a before method on your uh, policies that accept a user and the ability. And so I'm just gonna check if the user is the admin and return true. Otherwise, I'm not gonna return anything. So if you return false, the person will instantly be denied and it won't go on to check any of these other methods. But if you don't return anything, if you return null, it will go on, it'll run the before method and then run whatever other check it needs to run. So here, I'm just gonna check if the user is the admin. They're the only person that can delete. So if we go back to user one, who is the admin and refresh this again, now they can delete, even though our delete method is returning null, which will autom like automatically return uh, be a false. Our before method is returning true. So it's saying, yes, they can delete it. They can do everything. So, so if you have a site admin that you wanna be able to do everything, 
they can post, they can edit, obviously, underneath the edit, um, or sorry, the update, the user ID equals the post user ID. I am not Nathan Gov right now. I am Alex Com. So obviously I can't, this isn't what is allowing me, it's the before method. So, or sorry, the before method's appeared. So I think that's really cool. Um, next. So, so that was kind of everything on the index page. <clears throat> so on the show page, if we go to the view page here, we have edit and we have delete. And this is kind of just a different, uh, a different way that you can do it. So you can do like can admin, or you can also use those, um, the gates that we had before. So is their email domain this? So, so you can use gates or policies in, in your um, lay templates here, which like I said, the, the controllers are the policies are kind of like gates. Uh, they, they're just gates that are inside of a class instead of inside of your um, authorized service, auth service provider. So Nate, that uh, array you were talking about is here. If your model doesn't match the policy model name, I'm sure that you could map it in here, but if they match, you don't actually have to put anything in that. Okay, cool. I knew that I had seen that somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I believe that is all that I have, uh, unless anybody has any questions or wants to try something crazy. No, that was, that was great, yeah. It was it was nice to see. Sometimes I like always get confused if I'm like looking for like a gate or a policy. Mm -hmm. And so from the like can statements, it's kind of hard to tell um, if they have names like update or delete. Um, it's a little bit more obvious, but yeah. So do you do you actually use gates uh, at your company? I've never actually seen anywhere that uses gates. I've only seen or personally only use policies. I think I've only used policies. Okay. In like actual production. Oh, I wonder if this reg this po register policies, this policy is a key. Yeah, I wonder, okay, so that registers all the policies that are there. Yeah, so all of your policies do get registered as through the gates, so that's how that works. So yeah, I, so I found policies first and I started using those and then I went back and, and found gates and I was like, oh, these are kind of cool. But I was like, I don't know when I would actually use those. I guess for like an is admin thing would be kind of cool if you had different roles on the sites. But most of my sites, I just kind of specify, like this is a very typical pattern in a policy is doing something like this. Like who can update it? The person that made it. Who can uh, delete it? The person that made it, you know? So it's you, you end up doing this a lot, like the user ID equals whatever the post user ID. Yeah, no, that was great. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I, I figured it was kind of so. So when I was making this demo, it took like a long time.